A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Am I safe to say that it's about at this time in the season, maybe even this time on Christmas Eve, that many of us can finally breathe a sigh of relief? I mean, there may not be the exact things we anticipated under the tree at home, if there's anything at all. There may not even be a tree or decorations at all. The cards, the cookies, the cleaning... Maybe you got done what you wanted to, but maybe you didn't get to all of it. The kids tonight may be in their their nice Christmas outfits, or they could be in their PJs. The work we left behind in the office or at the classroom or in the field may or may not be done, but nevertheless, we are here. And here, we can breathe our sigh of relief. For unto us is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. It is always a pure joy, whether it's on Christmas Eve or in the time leading up to Christmas, when we can hear and experience the story of Christ's birth. Our group tonight, as always, did a wonderful job. And I know there's a few people out there who can now breathe their sighs of relief. But anytime I hear this story... I'm brought back to that time when I used to be in Christmas pageants growing up. Anyone else? Do we have anyone who used to be Mary? Some Josephs out there? How about some wise men? Some shepherds? Nobody was in a Christmas pageant. Come on. (laughs) This is interactive. Angels. How about angels? Lots of angels, I'm sure. Animals. All of the above, probably, over the years. There are a lot of memories in this tradition. I remember the time when there was a shortage of males, so Joseph was played by a 13-month-old boy who had to be carried down the aisle by Mary. No one could figure out if he was Joseph or Jesus. (laughs) My most memorable experience of a pageant was probably when I got to open and close the curtains when we had a stage. I don't know if I should admit that. But there's a reason that we have these memories. These pageants and programs tell a powerful story. Our worshiping together on this great night tells a powerful story. The celebrations and traditions that we hold so dear and that we work so hard and so frantically to recreate year after year tell a powerful story. It is the story of God coming to us in the flesh, and walking on the same earth that we do. It's this mysterious God who we often have to talk about in vague and questioning ways, taking off the invisibility cloak we sometimes believe exists, and saying, here I am, follow me, which is a great story, which is why we celebrate the way we do at Christmas. But... As our friend Paul Harvey might ask, what's the rest of the story? For those of you who got to be in the Christmas pageant growing up, did any of you ever get to be the star? I don't mean the star of the show. 
I mean that, that bright thing that led all the people to Christ. Did anyone get to be the star? A couple, okay. Sometimes that part of the cast of characters does get a, a person, but many times that role is relegated to this glitter-covered piece of cardboard. But here's what I'm proposing tonight. Tonight, all of us get to play the role of the shining star. I know, I know, the program's already done for this year, but the rest of the story, that's just that. We are the rest of the story. We get to take this light from this story into our dark world. We are the ones who will shine the light of the Christ candle for everyone to see. We get to be the mangers, not only shining the light, but carrying the Christ child to do the work of God. We get to be the stars. We have to be the stars because this story cannot stay in here. There's another story that I like to tell a lot, and I may have shared it before, that reminds us why we do this. And it goes like this. There was once a dark cave, deep down in the ground, underneath the earth and hidden away from view. Because it was so deep in the earth, the light had never been there. The cave had never seen light. The word light meant nothing to the cave, who couldn't imagine what this light might be. Then one day, the sun sent an invitation to the cave, inviting the cave to come up and visit. And so when the cave came up to visit the sun, it was amazed and delighted because the cave had never seen light before and it was dazzled by this experience. Feeling so grateful for the sun for inviting it to visit, the cave wanted to return the kindness. And so the cave invited the sun to come down to visit because the sun had never seen darkness. So the day came and the sun entered the cave and it looked around with great interest, wondering what darkness would be like. But then the sun became puzzled and asked the cave, where is the darkness? Remember the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Brothers and sisters, on this great Christmas night, may you see the light of the shining star. And may you too be the light in the dark places of our world. Merry Christmas to you. Amen.